But first, I want to introduce Sonia Morris, and she is a member of Project 21, a black leadership organization with the National Center for Public Policy Research. And she's gonna, we're going to talk about um, a recent commencement speech that President Biden gave to a black university, Howard University. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like, what, well, could you say something positive? But so anyway, Sonia's going to help us break that down. Welcome to the show, Sonia. <laughs> Thank you for having me on, Patty. Appreciate it. I want to give a little bit more background for you because you have a law degree and a master's, and, and you're working on your doctorate right now, right? That I've put on pause because I have a lot of things going on, including writing. So I'm going to put on, that on pause for my other project um, for, for right now. And you're the author of four books. So I don't know, you just, you sleep in your spare time, right? <laughs> <laughs> I get some sleep. Uh, but thank you for being on today because it means a lot to us when we have um, black conservatives and we are one in our thinking because there's so much divisiveness. So right. can you talk about a little bit what happened when uh, Joe Biden gave the commencement speech in, I think it was May 13th at Howard University? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as it is with the left, they take every opportunity to try to, to divide us and, you know, forgetting that not everybody falls for that divisive type of talk. And so he had a perfect opportunity to share with these students, give them some inspiration, some hope, um, a, for the future because everybody can see that America is not doing really, really well. So he had a golden opportunity to give some hope and inspiration to these students instead of divisiveness, separation, and hate. Um, and so he, you know, I was just thinking on, on the way here that, you know, he, he has an opportunity to tell his story. You know, we want to hear the story about how you got out of school and, you know, you had some hardships and, you know, but you were able to overcome and, you know, you have people you have to support and all these things. But as it, it is usually the case, if you don't have a story, you're going to make up something, right? And, you know, white supremacy is one of those made up things of the left. You know, um, I don't know in my life if I've ever been. Um, if I've ever had a problem in terms of being able to not move forward in my life because of some nebulous term called white supremacy. So it's really just something that the, the left has made up to try to continue to divide us. We already have enough problems in this country. And in addition to that, I believe it was just a deflectionary move um, on the president's part because of his failures as you know in, in the office. Wow. You know, that just it's so interesting how you put that all together. Because it, we're a country right now, we're hurting. We're hurting um, just the people, you know, and especially since COVID, it's like just everything is so divisive. And it's like you said, it's like he is here to try to, he should be trying to bring people together, but yet he's it's, doing the exact opposite. And we just don't understand that. Uh -huh. Well, it's a president's job, right, to really kind of bring the country together no matter what party you are. And, you know, recently, I have to tell you, uh, recently I have been convicted of my desire to see this person fail. But when you think about it, we're still all one country, right? So no matter who's up to bat, no matter how they got there, no matter who's up to bat, we're still one country. So I've got to pray that this person succeeds. Um, you know, it's a kind of a long shot. But, you know, we want we want to win as a country and it's the president's job, whether he's Republican, independent or Democrat, it's his job to bring our country together because he's the executive um, assigned to that job. His job is to execute. And right now, nothing is being executed in terms of good policies that will bring our country together. I, I love that but, attitude. I want to put up on the screen what exactly he said, why it was such a negative message. White supremacy is the single most dangerous terrorist threat in our homeland. And I'm not just saying this because I'm at a black, um, so that's, that's the um, Howard University. I say this wherever I go. So can you break that down a little more? Like you said you've never been stopped by white supremacy and you're not even from this country, right? Well, you know, I it's almost 45 years. So we came here in 1978. My parents brought us here. The, you know, my dad was a principal, my mom a nurse, and they took the opportunity to bring their the last um, three children to the land of opportunity and freedom. And so they did so. 
So when he says this, yeah, I, no, I have not had a problem where something has not gone forward in my life. I've been probably the greatest detractor in my own life in terms of things that haven't worked out, but it has never been white supremacy. And um, what, 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 would you just, what did you just ask about that? Basically to break it down. I just wanted to break down that message and I wanted our audience to say, to see specifically what he said. Like you're at a commencement speech, you got your right. cap and gowns, you're going out into the world, and he says, white supremacy is the biggest terrorist threat in this country. I, 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 and, and, and how could that be the biggest threat in the country when we're faced on every side with, you know, we have all, all of the things that he's failed at, right? He's failed at the economy, okay? Our economy is in a tailspin. He's failed at energy. We had energy independence. And you know that when energy uh, is up, when the price of energy is up, the price of everything, it's like a rising tide. The price of everything else goes up. So that's why we have high food. We have some scarcity. We have, um, you know, there's this um, uh, disaster at the southern border that we all know about, the increase in crime. Um, all of these things that are happening in our country, it's like the perfect storm. But instead of pointing to that, you're actually pointing to um, the, this, this, you know, these ne nebulous um, points. Sonia, when we come back, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, I want you to give us an inside look into the black community because I think it's probably becoming more divisive than ever because of things like this. At least that's what it seems like on our side. So we'll mm -hmm. talk about that when we come back. Don't go away. Absolutely.